Hey everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger, and we've got some more snow coming to the United States with also a bowling ball trough jacking down into the southern plains, bringing up some moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, making that with a little bit of cold air and some upper level shear. And that's a perfect recipe for some severe weather. So we're going to be breaking all of that down. So as you can see, we do have some winter weather advisories up here into the northeast. We're talking about two to five inches of snow with accumulations of one tenth in some of these areas. We'll be going over a more detailed forecast in just a little bit with some winter storm watches up a little bit higher to the north in the northeast. Also, some winter weather advisories coming out for parts of Minnesota, most of Wisconsin going into the UP of Michigan and western Michigan as well. Looking at our future radar here as we go into the 15th we could see a large but very skinny strip of snow kind of spread all the way from Colorado up into northern Iowa and this is kind of a new feature on some of our models so we don't really have winter weather advisories all the way back into here but this could bring some gustier winds and also some pretty brief but heavy snow chances over there going from Colorado into Nebraska and then also into western Iowa this is around 12 a.m. on the 15th so this is basically just the very beginning of of this snowstorm and as I continue to push this forward you can see as we go into the earlier portions of the morning here at around 3 a.m. we start to see another area here of some freezing precip that's that rain that's going to be falling it's going to look like rain it's going to feel like rain but the temperatures at the surface are going to be 32 degrees or below and that's going to cause for some icing and as I continue to push this forward just a couple more hours now into 7 a.m. on the 15th you can see that that freezing rain starts to lift up into northern Indiana most of Ohio with still some snow happening over here in northern Michigan through Wisconsin also into northern Iowa also parts of Nebraska getting in on some snow and some mixed precip potentially making it into northern Missouri going through Kansas as well. Further down to the south, you can see that we have a whole lot of rain happening all the way into parts of Tennessee, Kentucky, also southern Indiana, southern Illinois, parts of Missouri, and also moving into parts of Arkansas. This is the day that we are expecting severe weather, but by 7 a.m., we could have some thunderstorms out there. The good news is, is that at least this early in the day, the instability hasn't risen up to the north like we're expecting it to, so a lot of those thunderstorms won't be severe. As you can see over here on our future radar, we could have thunderstorms really extending all the way from Arkansas through Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, Southern Illinois, Indiana, and also potentially maybe even making it into Southern Ohio, maybe even bringing some thunder um, icing, I guess you could say. It's going to feel like rain and there could be thunder, so you might think it's just a typical thunderstorm, but again, if those temperatures are at 32 degrees or below, when it's raining, that's going to hit the surface and stick as ice. Pushing this forward just a couple of more hours. Now we're into 12 p.m. here on the 15th. Still have some widespread rain down into parts of Kentucky going into Arkansas. This is around the time where we're going to start to kind of get alert here for some flooding issues to start happening into Kentucky, maybe even starting there in Tennessee and Arkansas as well. It's because as you can see, we're going to have pretty much a whole day of rain in this area. Now further up to the north, that snow is pretty light to moderate over here in parts of Iowa. Also moving into Wisconsin on the eastern portion this is still at around 12 p.m most of northern michigan and the kind of thumb of the oven mitt of michigan is getting a little bit heavier snow there with some potential light to moderate snow picking up here for central pennsylvania moving up into new york with some freezing rain possible up in the higher elevations here in the Appalachian Mountains that run all the way through parts of North Carolina going up into Virginia and also into those West Virginia Mountains. With some sleet and some freezing rain possible here for Chicago, Northern Indiana, and parts of Ohio as well with more sleet pushing up into Southern Michigan. And pushing this through four more hours, you can see that most of that snow is done over here. Some light accumulations could be possible as far down as parts of Oklahoma, but we're really not expecting that to really stick and really amount to much. You'll probably won't even notice the dusting on the ground from that. And then our attention starts to shift up to the northeast. You can see that as this low pressure system kind of skirts up into the northeast, a lot of heavy snow is going to be possible, really mainly for New York going into Vermont, New Hampshire, and also Maine. And that's going to continue all the way into 6 p.m. And potentially further than that, but I want to pause it here for just a moment and kind of shift our attention back down here to the southeast. Switching over to our future radar, you can see that we have kind of a large area here where we're going to have some pretty heavy rain. We're going to be watching out for flooding in that area. And in fact, we have a pretty decent chance of some flooding in this area because this, these storms really aren't going to be moving too much. And so we could have anywhere from five to six inches in some of these spots and maybe some isolated spots of higher 
accumulations of rain, leading to some dangerous flooding. Further down to the southeast, we also have another dangerous threat that's developing here, and that is going to be for severe weather and potential tornadoes here. Starting off as early as 6 o'clock, you can see that our instability has ejected a lot further up to the north here, into parts of Arkansas, Louisiana. We've got that trough dipping down into the United States, bringing in some stronger flow aloft, and also some pretty strong winds in the lower levels out in front of the storm. These two things mixed together are going to kind of be like two hands in a bathtub going past each other, and we're going to see some spin in this area, which is bad news, but there are a little bit of areas of good news, I guess you could say, sprinkled in there. With this kind of shear environment, typically you would see some forcing, but the geometry of the trough here is kind of positively tilted here, which means a lot of our areas where we're going to see difluence or divergent aloft are going to be further up to the north out and away from the instability, meaning that where our main threat is going to be where that lower level shear is, a lot of our wind vectors or our wind movement is going to be parallel to each other instead of perpendicular. When you have it more perpendicular, you have a higher chance of four tornadoes, and also that can be an indication that you're dealing with a more mature storm, which usually is not a positively tilted storm. And usually with those more negative tip tilts, you can see some difluence and divergence over these storms and also into the warm sector, which is out in this region. But because we don't really have that, we're not going to really see a whole lot of forcing in this area, which essentially is forcing that air to rise. And, you know, with those thunderstorms, you know, the air is rising within the cumulonimbus with those updrafts. And when you don't have that out in front of the line, you're not going to really get those prefrontal, more discrete supercell. But in and along this entire line, we're going to be watching out for the threat for some QLCS tornadoes. And as I push this three hours into the future, you can see that this line is going to extend all the way from Arkansas down and through Louisiana. And by 9 p.m., this is going to start to enter into Mississippi, where we're going to have an elevated chance for some tornadoes. Now, any storms that can kind of fire out in front of this storm and become mature, we're still going to have to watch that, even though all of the models right now are not really indicating that that is a scenario. Sometimes these models change, even though this is for tomorrow, these can still change a little bit. But even if we don't get any prefrontal storms, we can still get quite a few tornadoes. The good news, I guess you could say, or some better news, I think is the better way to say it, better news than, you know, whether or not you would have prefrontals or not, is that inside of this line is typically, you know, you have some briefer and weaker tornadoes. I guess the bad news still is sometimes when you get this QLCS spam, you can get a lot more tornadoes than you would get into a discrete setup as you can have multiple circulations and rotations and tornadoes all throughout this line. So we got to be watching out for that potential and it's going to be possible all the way up into Tennessee as well. Switching over to our instability at this time, you can see it is really starting to fade here on the NAM 3K model. So as it starts to move into parts of northern Mississippi, we're going to have a lot lower instability. Looking at our 850 millibar winds, though, you can see that our jet is definitely increasing in some of these spots. I mean, we're talking about almost 100 mile per hour in some isolated spots, 100 mile per hour lower level jet. Now, that's a very strong lower level jet. So even though we have a little bit of lower instability, our SRH is going to be elevated and that's going to add some buoyancy where the instability isn't really adding that buoyancy. So we could still have a tornado threat as far north as Northern Alabama going into Birmingham uh, by the round, by the time we get to around 2 a.m. Still going to have a little bit of a tornado threat here, but it is going to start to get lower and lower the more that we go throughout the morning hours. But I still can't rule out an isolated tornado or five out of this, just given the fact that this is going to have very strong shear as that moves into the southeast. Really do think, though, after 4 a.m., it's going to be pretty hard for a tornado to form further up to the north. But if we come over here to our instability, you can see that there's still a decent area of instability near areas like eastern or western Florida, southern and eastern Alabama here and kind of the corner there near Georgia. And when we see this instability pile up again is where we're going to have to watch out for some more severe weather. And you can see that we kind of get a close approach here for the eastern coast. Right now we have a marginal risk out on the eastern coast, but if this instability tracks just a little bit further to the west, we could see a little bit more of an elevated threat for tornadoes here in and along the coast. And this is going to be for kind of mid-afternoon here on the 16th. We switch over to our lower level shear you can see it's really strong up here into Northern Carolina. Not a whole lot of convection is happening due to that lack of instability. So still a little bit of question marks on the 16th. Still going to have to wait for the models to kind of make up their minds there. And further down in Florida, there still is some decent instability, but our lower level shear is a lot weaker down there, but potentially still strong enough to support a tornado threat uh, embedded in this line of storms that moves through Jackson. Now, after this storm moves through, generally out in front of the line of storms is going to be warmer in the 60s and 70s. Still going to be generally colder up here in 
the northern portion of the United States. But after this storm moves through, we are going to see this little air mass that is up into Canada try to dive down into the United States, setting us up for another potential stretch for some winter weather. We get a low pressure system down here. That snow could be a little bit further south. If we get a change in that track and it's a little bit further north, it could maybe bring some snow potentially up here into the Ohio Valley. Looking at our latest GFS run, you can see that it kind of is threading the needle here. Low pressure system kind of further to the south with some snow potential even into parts of Oklahoma, most of Missouri, maybe even northern Arkansas could get in on some of that snowfall. We're talking southern Illinois, Indiana, southern Ohio, most of Kentucky, and then eventually, you know, still seeing some snow there in eastern Tennessee, some mixed precip as well with some more snow, light snow happening over there near West Virginia, and then maybe far south as Richmond, Washington, Maryland, and Delaware uh, could get in some light to moderate snowfall as we move through the 19th here. So really watching uh, anywhere from the late night on the 17th all the way through into the early morning and afternoon here of the 19th uh, for another little snowstorm to come after that. Now in terms of that surge of cold air to coming behind that one storm that's going to bring that severe weather threat and some snow, we're going to be seeing some negative temperatures dip back into the United States. And you know what? It's going to make it pretty far down to the south. I think we can call this, you know, an, an Arctic air mass moving into the United States and you can see you know all the way from Kentucky into the Ozarks up into the northern plains and parts of the Great Lakes are going to be getting into those negative temperatures with single digits potentially making it as far down south as northern Texas and most of Oklahoma. After that little southern wave kind of comes through that southern low pressure system bringing that chance for some snow we're going to start to see those temperatures work their way down further to the south and east into the south and east and by the time we get into the 21st at around 3 a.m we could see almost all of the united states below freezing except for you know the southwest and also the west coast but almost everywhere else is pretty much below freezing with those negative temperatures making it starting to make it into the ohio valley before eventually kind of meandering off to the east uh, a little bit more but as it you know makes it into ohio and pennsylvania it should be a little bit of a warmer air mass but we're still talking about single digits to barely double digit temperatures now looking at our precipitation amounts over the next six days you can see that we kind of have a bullseye here for some heavier precipitation so that's heavier rainfall and a chance for some flooding is definitely going to exist uh, anywhere in this yellow and in this red extending from northern arkansas through kentucky southern illinois and indiana and also potentially into parts of ohio as well well, believe it or not, this is setting up uh, the chance here for some pretty dangerous flooding conditions. We have a moderate risk uh, for some flooding uh, over here into Memphis, Nashville, Louisville, Maysville, Charleston, and Cincinnati. So even though you're not going to probably get the worst portion of these storms, the flooding is definitely going to be possible, and it's definitely going to be concerning if some of these areas pick up anywhere more than six inches over a short amount of time. can really lead to some problems, creeks overflowing, water on roads, roads impassable. So just be careful up there, as we do have a higher chance here for some flooding, especially in this red and yellow area. In terms of our severe weather threat out there, we are watching out for the chance for tornadoes, damaging winds, and some hail here. We get an enhanced risk over here near Shreveport, Monroe, Jackson, Meridian, Tuscaloosa, Fayette, Tupelo, Memphis, and Pine Bluff. Also central Mississippi as well. And we also have a slight risk near New Orleans, Mobile, Dothan, Montgomery, Atlanta, Birmingham, Huntsville, and Nashville with a marginal risk in the green expanded around this area of some more dangerous severe weather. Looking at our tornado risk out there, you can see that we do have a 10% hashed risk for tornadoes. That's going to be for Ruston, Monroe, Lake Providence, Greenville, Greenwood, Granada, Clarksdale, El Dorado, and Pine Bluff. And then we also have a 5% expanded uh, from Shreveport, Baton Rouge, Montgomery, Birmingham, Huntsville, Memphis, and Little Rock. This 10% hash risk means that we have a chance for some strong tornadoes. Those are typically some of the more damaging tornadoes that we see anywhere above those EF2s can definitely do a lot more damage to your house than maybe say an EF0 or an EF1. And that doesn't mean if you live in the brown area to leave your guard down because even if you live in a trailer or a manual manufactured home or maybe your home's roof is just not as anchored as well as you thought an ef1 can still do considerable damage to some houses in our green area that's a two percent chance or so a lower chance but certainly not impossible uh as we move further into the forecast here and it looks like our tornado threat should stop in and around the georgia area before picking back up again potentially on the east coast if we can get a little bit more instability to come in damaging winds is also going to be a problem
problem and the red is a 30% chance, the yellow is a 15% chance, and the brown is a 5% chance. And our hail chances are certainly there as well. Yellow is a 15% chance for some large hail, one inch and above, so that's about golf ball to about hen egg size hail, and then around that is a 5% chance for that hail. Going into day three, you can see we have a marginal risk, so this is going to be the day after, so the 16th here, Panama City, Gainesville, Jacksonville, Augusta, Columbia, Wilmington, Jacksonville, Greenville, Virginia Beach, and Richmond are all going to be under the gun here for some chances for severe weather, which will be kind of muted if we don't get that instability come up. But if the instability does make it up to the coast, we could definitely see an elevated tornado threat and potentially a slight risk with a 5% chance for tornadoes get introduced if that lower level shear can bring up enough moisture into the coast. But for now, it doesn't really look like it's going to happen. So some severe weather will be possible, probably a small chance for tornadoes. Definitely some rumbles of thunder out there for a lot of folks. But thank you, everybody, for watching. That's going to be it for me. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Before you leave, if you enjoyed this forecast, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.